Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, and just before we get started, remember to like, subscribe, and don't forget to turn that post notification bell on so you can be here for every single upload. Without further ado, let's get right into the video. Okay guys, so today we're going to be talking about all seven of the UK amphibian species, and starting off with number one. Okay guys, so for number one we have the common toad, and these guys are, as they say, very common throughout the UK, and um... They usually like to spend most of their time away from water, except when they're mating, um, spending much of their time in woodlands, gardens, hedgerows, and grasslands. They like shallow burrows they return to after eating, um, and overall these guys are just pretty, I think, pretty cute looking. Um, they're found almost everywhere except for the Scottish islands. Um, but these guys have a strange mating thing where there's usually one female and several males that try to um, impregnate the female and fertilize the eggs. And it starts off as something like this, and then um, once they lay their eggs, they lay them in strands, unlike frogs, which lay them in clutches. These uh, toads lay them in strands, so long string-like structures. Um, and that's it for the common toad. So yeah, moving on to number two. So number two is the common frog, again, as with the toads, pretty common. And um, these guys will be found almost anywhere where there's a suitable breeding uh, pond or puddle nearby. Um, they like to breed in shallow water, um, anything from ponds, lakes, canals, and puddles in urban areas. Um, and if you want to help these guys out, a great way to do so, if you have a garden pond, it's a great way for them to be able to um, further expand their population. And that's what it goes from tadpole to froglet. Anyway, but that's it for the common to uh, frog, and let's move on to number three. Okay, guys, so for number three, we have pool frogs. And these guys are found in areas like ponds and slow-moving canals or rivers. Also found in marshes. Um, these guys actually were thought to be extinct in the mid 90s and were reintroduced um, from the still prevalent populations in Europe. Um, but these guys are pretty cool. They have um, kind of cheek pouches, which they make their croaking sounds from. And each uh, frog and species of frog has a distinct call. So these guys are pretty cool. And um, moving on to number four. Okay guys, for number four we have the Natterjack toad, so another species of toad, and these guys prefer to live on more sandy, sand dune-like areas um, along the coast, and um, unfortunately they are a threatened species um, due to a loss of habitat and um, urbanization, but um, these guys, as you can see, have very large um, croak pouches, and that means that their call can actually be heard up to two kilometers away. So yeah, a pretty loud little toads there, and um, I think these guys are a very beautiful species of toad, and we're lucky to have them here in the UK. But um, unfortunately, there is only 60 sites where they can be found across all of the UK, so um, search them up, and if they're there, have a look. Number five. Okay guys, so for number five we have the smooth newt, and this is the most common species of newt across the UK. And uh, these guys aren't endangered or anything just yet, so um, they can be found pretty much everywhere, Scotland, Ireland, England, and Wales, all over the UK. And um, the males start to develop a crest in the breeding season, as you can see here. Um, and once that's happened and they've had their babies, they tend to lay eggs on the underside of... Um, water-based plants, so any lily pads or anything, they'll just uh, fold over the leaf and lay the egg underneath. <laughs> number six. Okay guys, so for number six we have the palmate newt, and uh, these guys are cool because they can be found pretty much everywhere, just like the common or smooth newt, but um, they can live in drier conditions. Um, the only place they're not really found is kind of um, northern and central England, um, but these guys are found pretty much everywhere else. They prefer more acidic soils, so that's one of the reasons that they're not found in central and northern England. But these guys are pretty cool. As I said, they can survive more dry climates. Um, obviously, they still need to be moist and damp, but uh, yeah, these guys are the palmate newts, um, a pretty cool species in my opinion. And um, without further ado, we'll move on to the last species of newt, Number seven. 
Okay guys, so for number seven we have the Great Crested Newt, which is the rarest species of newt on this list. And um, these guys are found widely distributed across um, the lowland of England and Wales and parts of Scotland. But this distribution is extremely patchy um, and they're pretty hard to find usually. Um, so a much rarer species, but can and have disappeared from uh, many sites in Europe completely. So um, if you see these guys, you're very lucky. They can be uh, pretty easily recognized by the large kind of white stripe going down their tail. And um, in the male, uh, in the males in the breeding season have this lovely crest and um, so if you see that you know it's the great crested newt okay guys hope you've enjoyed this video if you've learned anything please hit the subscribe button leave a like and comment so we can beat the youtube algorithm thanks guys see you in the next one